That's why we break, you know, the way people should sit in church is not just a large congregation, it's according to generations. When you check Israelites, when they moved, they either sat, they sat according to their tribes, and in the tribe, they sat according to their generations. When church really becomes interested in establishment, we can't be 10,000 in one audience. Who will you talk to? There are those you can say strong things to, and there are those that you need to say little, little things to, because we are in different generations in the spirit. That's why sometimes you hear us preach where we thought some strong meat we will now come back and explain smaller matters. And people will hear you and say, ah, this man has lost it. You don't preach what you know. You preach based on your audience. If I meet young believers, I can't be telling them deep kingdom matters. They don't even know the benevolence of God. You start talking judgment. They will, they will leave you and go home. But people just sit on the internet, cross their leg, and be marking where you are in your walk with God. The other one saw me the other wrote on the other day and said, the kind of people this man is mingling with, he will soon fall into error. I laughed. Me, I know my calling. I'm not a pastor. I'm a revivalist. I'm sent to the body. The good, the bad, and the ugly. When I meet the good, I strengthen their faith. When I meet the bad, I convict them by the word. When I meet the ugly, I bring the judgment of God until they repent. It's church organization that people create different factions. I'm not a factionless person. I'm sent to the body. That's why Jesus saw Zacchaeus. He said, come down. Today I'm coming to your house. Tomorrow you see Jesus in a banquet with the Pharisees. Banquet. The worst set of people in the then world were tax collectors and Pharisees. They looked at him, they said, he's a friend of publicans. This is a fake prophet. When the harlot came and poured perfume on his leg, they said, ah, if he's a prophet, he should have known that this is a harlot. Jesus said, those who are well don't need a doctor. It is those who are sick that need doctor. I know my calling. I'm a revivalist. I'm not a pastor. If I'm a pastor, I'll go and look for the people that preach my kind of message. I'm sent to the body. That's why we mingle with genuine people. We also mingle with fake people. We are the salt of the body. If we create fraction, some people will be lost forever. And they will not just be lost. Their congregation will be lost. So if I enter the camp of the fake people, even if they refuse to repent, because not everybody Jesus met repented. Zacchaeus repented. Judas never repented. But even if they choose to, choose not to repent, at least... Some of their followers will hear us and they will know that what their papa is saying is fake. <laughs> That's why we mingle with everybody. And so if you think we we'll lose our calling by mingling with people, you have not seen anything. Because this man talking here, I can even enter a herbally shrine. The Christianity of self-preservation. You want to preserve your name and be a good person. Some of us don't have a name. We are called apostles. That's our work. And if you think that I don't know Jesus enough that I meet a fake prophet or a fake believer and he will convert me, then I need to stop preaching and go back. That means I didn't graduate from the school of the Spirit. I didn't graduate. If a man can still change me, my encounters are fake. But if my encounters are not fake, and you think because of preserving my name, I will create factions, I'm not part of those people. I am sent to the body. I strengthen the genuine. I convict the fake. And we judge the diabolic. Because Jesus feasted with Zacchaeus, he feasted with the Pharisees. He carried prostitutes as his disciples. And even the son of perdition followed him till he died.
Some look at you. You preach a strong message today. They now hear another message. They say, Kai, this man is no longer preaching the message we know him for. Ah, I'm a traveler. I'm an itinerant preacher. I can go to a place today and I see strong believers and we talk deep matters. I will go to another place tomorrow and I will find only babes. I will give them what they can handle. You are online hearing all the messages. You don't know that I preach one in Jalingo. I preach the other one in Meduguri and I preach the other one in Enugu. I'm not talking to the same people. That's why you hear Paul. You hear John. At one point, they say, if you sin, ask for forgiveness. At another point, he said, if you sin, Jesus will ask for forgiveness for you. At another point, he said, we don't sin. You now hear one person saying three different things. You say, this is contradiction. No. He's talking to different levels of maturity. And that's why the apostles are called wise master builders. I can go to a congregation and tell them, whatever you do, God has forgiven you. I will see a mother and say, God has forgiven and forgotten. Come to the Lord. That's what we do on crusade ground. But when we come to discipleship ground, we will tell you that in the world to come, but if you carry the word to come to a crusade ground, they will go home. So you that is on the internet, judging those who are accurate and those who are fake, why not go to the mission field for one year? I just came back from Jalingo. My whole body is aching. We ministered fire and brimstone this morning in Jalingo. And then we came back. Meanwhile, I flew six hours overnight from London to Abuja two days ago. The next day I went to Jalingo. Today I'm here. Tomorrow I'm going to Milan. Sometimes you stand up in the morning, your waist is like this. <laughs> you can't bend well. Meanwhile, we are young. This is when we should carry our yoke. He said, bear your yoke in your youth. <laughs> because very soon when you are 50, you can't do anything again. Then you consolidate. <laughs> 